Well, hello YouTube, it's me Fortmaster, and welcome to a new reaction. Uh, this is going to be the first reaction I hope to do to Kutzkazat. I hope I'm pronouncing that, or in a nutshell, as it is in English. Um, needs to say, I've been a fan of their stuff for years. I've loved watching all their science stuff. Most recently, their, um, their stuff about, like, ants, and, like, the slave ants was the last one I watched. Uh, what was it like? What happened? What would happen if you turned the earth into gold into solid gold? Uh, and then there was that one short film they did called egg, which I don't want to spoil it, but it was very nice um, so uh, this one uh, Black hole star the star that shouldn't exist Well, like, considering my comparatively rudimentary uh, knowledge of stellar matters um, you, one would think that a star and a black hole, uh, could not be the same thing given that they're complete opposite ends of the spectrum, uh, whereas a star outputs energy while a black hole just endlessly sucks it in. <laughs> hmm. Well, uh, color me intrigued. Uh, let's see what this is about, shall we? <laughs> black hole stars may have been the largest stars that ever existed. They burned brighter than galaxies and were larger than any star today or that could ever exist in the future. Well, wow, okay. But besides their scale, what makes them special and weird is that deep inside, they were occupied by a cosmic parasite, an endlessly hungry black hole. How is that even possible? Okay, so here's my prediction of how this might work, and I'll have to see if I'm anywhere even near the ballpark. Black hole, you have a black hole gravity sucks in a whole bunch of hydrogen and the humongous mass of hydrogen gathered up by the black hole in its gravity well is enough to actually cause it to undergo fission and create the star um yeah let's go with that let's see if that's anywhere in the ballpark this intro Black hole stars take the weirdness of black holes and go beyond to break everything we know about how stars form and grow. They were only possible during a short window of time in the early universe, but if they existed, they would solve one of the largest mysteries of cosmology. Black hole stars were excessive any way you look at them. The most massive stars today may have about 300 solar masses. Okay. A black hole star had up to 10 million solar masses of nearly pure hydrogen. Let's take a moment to look at what this hey, my means. My predictions visually. looking pre kind of the sun, Wesson, LL Pegasi, the largest star, and finally the black hole star. Its scale is beyond words. I mean, I know that like the biggest stars that are around today are are like big enough that they encompass our entire solar system. But that looks like it might, like, encompass our entire, like, corner of the galaxy. Over 800,000 times wider than our sun, 380 times larger than the largest star we know today. And, and that, again, that's given the fact that, you know, the sun makes up, like, was it 95 or is it 98% of the mass in our solar system? Then you have that. Far below its surface is a black hole growing rapidly as it devours billions upon billions of tons of matter per second. Normally, stars are born from gigantic clouds, collections of thousands or millions of solar masses of mostly hydrogen. In these clouds, matter starts to accumulate around the densest spots inside. As these spots get denser, their gravitational pull intensifies and they grow faster. Eventually, they generate so much heat and pressure that they ignite fusion reactions and a new star is born. Yeah, exactly. But this puts a limit on their size. Nuclear fusion releases enough radiation energy that the surrounding gas cloud is blown away. The new baby star can't gather more mass. From now on, the star is living on the edge between two forces. Gravity pulling in, trying to squash the star, and radiation created by fusion pushing outwards, trying to blow the star apart. Yeah, okay, so my, my hypothesis was looking is look, starting to look pretty good there. After millions or billions of years, the core runs out of fuel and the balance breaks, destroying the star. But black hole stars were very, very different. 
the beasts of the early universe. <laughs> a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, when the universe was much smaller, all the matter in existence was much more concentrated. The universe was much denser and hotter. Dark matter was a dominant player, forming giant structures called dark matter halos. These dark matter halos were so massive that they pulled in and concentrated unimaginably gigantic amounts of hydrogen gas, becoming the birthplaces of the first stars and galaxies. Epic clouds of hydrogen formed, some as massive as 100 million suns, more than the mass of small galaxies. In this unique environment that will never exist again, the enormous gravitational pull of the dark matter halos drew gas into its center and created extremely massive stars. As we said before, when a star is born, it blows away the gas cloud that created it. But these titanic gas clouds in the early universe were so large and massive that even after their birth, more and more gas piled on the newborn star, making it grow to unbelievable proportions. Okay, never mind, I was completely wrong. Um, but just going off this whole thing with like matter being concentrated and stuff like that, th this remind that reminded me of a saying I believe Stephen Hawking said was that if the matter was completely spread even throughout the universe at the Big Bang, nothing would have happened because the gravitational pull or on like all matter would have been equal in every direction. But in real life, it was just slightly like uneven, and that's how things started to pull pull towards each other and make you know galaxies that we all see today and i believe the uh what he uh, the example he gave was if you gave and if you made a huge square out of marbles like a hundred by a hundred each were like one inch apart and you just removed two marbles at random from anywhere in that hundred by hundred square that was the equivalent of the slight difference in densities in the in, of gas in the early universe or something like that and just like that little thing just mm, it just, again, time, it goes from that little difference to us, where we are now. The young star is forced to grow and grow and grow, getting more and more massive, until in some cases, it reaches up to 10 million times the mass of our sun. Cry I can't even just imagine that. A single star having twice the mass of an entire galaxy. Now I'm starting to see where the whole black hole part of the star comes in, where you have so much mass, the center is literally being crushed into a black hole while the star is still alive. Live crushed by gravity, its core gets hotter and hotter, desperately pushing outwards, trying to blow itself apart, but to no avail. There's too much mass and too much pressure. Black hole the balance forms. is impossible to uphold. Like a supernova run fast forward, the core gets crushed into a black hole. Normally that would be the end. Today's stars go supernova, a black hole forms, and things calm down. But in this case, the star survives its own death. A tremendous explosion rocks the star from the inside, but it's not enough. The star is so large and massive that not even a supernova can destroy it. But now <laughs> it has a... <laughs> Again, you're talking about a star that's so stupidly huge that it's that it, that the star exploding literally doesn't, doesn't destroy it. I mean, I can't even fathom only, of course, like they said, this is a single, this is a single stellar entity that has the mass larger than most galaxies nowadays. Black hole for a heart. It's tiny, a few tens of kilometers in the center of a thing the size of the solar system. The monster grows. Stars are born from ever faster spinning and collapsing gas, and so they also spin. When a black hole is born from the core of a star, it keeps its angular momentum. This means that matter that gets drawn in doesn't just fall in a straight line, but instead begins orbiting the black hole in smaller and smaller circles, going faster and faster. The result is an accretion disk where gas orbits at nearly the speed of light. Only a small amount of gas actually falls in at any given moment. Basically, black holes put a lot of food on the table and only nibble at it. But the matter trapped in the accretion disk doesn't have a good time. No, Friction it gets excited and between and... particles heated up. Oh my god, could that be why that's part of the that's part of the thing. Not only are they super massive, but the amount of energy being uh, produced from the accretion just orbiting the star is helping keep the star uh, big and alive up to temperatures of millions of degrees. Actively feeding black holes have accretion disks that are incredibly hot and powerful. 
This heat from the disk further restricts how much a black hole can devour, just like the core of stars. The super-hot material creates radiation that blows away most of the food within its reach. So even if a black hole had access to as much food as it desired, it can only grow slowly. A black hole embedded inside a black hole star is different. The enormous pressure surrounding it pushes down matter directly into the black hole, overcoming all restrictions on how fast it can consume. This process is so violent and releases so much energy that the accretion disk becomes hotter and releases more radiation pressure than any star core ever could. Enough to push back against the weight of 10 million <laughs> suns. An impossibly dangerous balance has been created. Millions of soda masses pushing in, the angry radiation of a force-fed black hole pushing out. For the next few million years, the black hole star is consumed from within. The black hole grows to thousands of solar masses, and the bigger it gets, the faster it eats, which heats up the star even more and causes it to expand. In its final phase, the black hole star has become over 30 times wider than our solar system, truly the largest star to ever exist in the universe. The intense magnetic fields at its core spew out jets of plasma from the black hole's poles, which pierce through the star and shoot out into space, turning it into a cosmic beacon. It must have been one of the most awe-inducing sights to ever exist in the universe. But this also marks the end. It becomes too stretched and the accretion disk within too powerful. The parasite destroys its host, blowing it apart. A black hole with the mass of 100,000 suns rips its way out to hunt for new prey while leaving behind nothing but a star carcass. The supermassive question. If oh wait, is this is this um one of the things they're um is this one of the things they're postulating for the uh, for the reason why most galaxies have a supermassive black hole in the center, from like these things? If black hole stars existed, they could explain one of the greatest mysteries of the universe. The supermassive black holes we see at the center of galaxies are just too big they shouldn't be possible. Black holes born from regular supernovas can be a few tens of solar masses at most. And because of the process we explained before, they grow slowly after that. If black holes merge, they can form slightly larger black holes of over a hundred solar masses. It should take billions and billions of years to make black holes with hundreds of thousands or even millions of solar masses. And yet, we know that some supermassive black holes already had 800 million solar masses only 690 million years after the Big Bang. Black hole stars are a sort of black hole cheat code. <laughs> if they formed very early in our universe, and the black holes that emerged from them were thousands of solar masses, then they could be the seeds for supermassive black holes. These seeds the could take root galaxies. in the center of the earliest galaxies, merging with others and drawing in enough matter to grow quickly and reliably. Very soon, we may be able to verify their past existence. The James Webb Space Telescope is turning its sensors to explore the farthest reaches of the universe, looking back in time, back to the early universe that we couldn't see before. So, with luck, we might be able to witness glimpses of these tragic titans in the brief moment between their formation and destruction. Until then, let's do the visual journey again. Ju I swear, the whole thing with, like, so I know that for stars, the bigger they are, the shorter their life is because, again, gravity um, causes, their, causes their core to become more active and hotter so it churns through its fuel more uh, more readily. But, like, at that point, that just takes it to an extreme. <laughs> just for fun. Stars are big. Black hole stars, bigger. A long it's that it's that whole thing just 
you know that feeling where you suddenly feel very small? All these these wonders of the early universe that we'll never be able to see firsthand. Makes you kind of sad. A star so massive that its core becomes a black hole before it even dies. I mean, again, I don't know how long this theory has been around, but I mean, that, that sounds like something that, like, 40 years ago in like physics you would have been laughed out of the room so uh yeah <laughs> i hope you guys liked if you did leave a like uh subscribe if not of course of course a link to the original will be in the description as well as the link to my socials and whatever if you want to follow those so yeah i hope you guys liked if you did leave a like subscribe if not and i'll see you guys next time goodbye